did it feel like to share your experience on stand and like finally get to have your voice heard in that way? So I don't know if you were able to hear it or not, but I feel like I fucking shined up there. Uh, especially considering the circumstances. Like I've been in the shoes three and a half years. Um, these people put me in the hospital, a guard did, splitting my head open while I was handcuffed in my underwear. I've had these guards put me on mail bands, telephone bands, visiting bands. I've had them put me in boxes to get jumped by, by gang members. And so despite all of that, I was able to get up there and just fully express myself. And it felt so goddamn good. Uh, I think they thought I was going to break. Like, I think they thought that I was fragile because I spent the last several years in a six by eight box. That's smaller than a bathroom. And I haven't been around anybody. Nobody. I have no contact with another human except for a non-contact visit with my wife once a week. So to be in that big ass room surrounded by people and most of them are enemies. Most people in that room didn't didn't want me to succeed. There was as many lawyers and prosecutors there watching as there was supporters. Uh, and I was just able to look at them and just feel so good knowing that like this is this is my voice. And I wasn't like because my story has been I guess the truth. It was, I didn't have to get up there and stutter like Will Cox or uh, 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 like Camrad. These stupid motherfuckers. Uh, I just got up there and was able to talk and express what happened to me, what these bastards put me through. And it felt great. Like, it was freeing. It was liberating. And I I really felt like that, that helped. That if I hadn't done that, like, we would have been in a lot tougher spot. Because cause things weren't, weren't going that great. Like, the government were, they were trying to stymie my, my legal team, trying to, trying to pump the brakes on any good back and forth and shit like that with, that my lawyers were doing and like cross exam and all that jazz so uh, I went up there prepared my team had me prepared and it felt really really fucking good to say like this is what you did you know you did it and then to be believed to have people believe me was just absolutely amazing absolutely amazing uh, this is uh, Lieutenant Cameron it's right here at FCI Florence um, this is going to uh Today's date is August 17, 2018. Time is? 2.39 p.m. Camera operator, state name? Activities Lieutenant Reynolds. Uh, this is an additional debrief uh, due to uh, uh, Lieutenant Wilcox getting a medical assessment when we were doing the debrief um, earlier on uh, inmate uh, Eric King. Uh, now I'll introduce you staff member Lieutenant Wilcox. Same. My name is Dino Wilcox uh, here at FCI Florence. I was uh, <laughs> inmate King had been called up to the lieutenant's office and was being interviewed at the time um, in the lieutenant's office. He decided to strike me in the face, um, at which time responding staff placed him on the ground and uh, took control of the inmate. I am immediately departed the area for a medical assessment. Uh, did receive some damage to my nose and allegedly broken blood vessel in the eye. Um, other than that, I will go medic be medically assessed outside and uh, nothing else to report. Again, I'd like to reiterate this is an additional uh, debrief for uh, Lieutenant Wilcox due to him getting a medical assessment by uh, uh, another medical professional. Um, time is now. 2.43 p.m. 2.43 p.m. And it ends uh, additional debrief. How was it seeing Will Cox and Camrad there in the courtroom and hearing them testify? Oh, it was awesome. I thought it was going to be, like, enraging. Um, but they both look so stupid. Like, Camrad was wearing the same red shirt that every other BOP officer was wearing. Like, the guard that put me in the hospital, the one that split my head open, he testified too, and he was wearing the same goddamn red shirt. It's like they were all in the back just swapping out this one ill-fitting shirt. And so, but, like, there was parts that were triggering hearing them just lie. And they know they're lying. Like, they know for a fact what happened. And so, like, that part was really upsetting, hearing Wilcox, like, just bullshit about how he doesn't remember but he, he knows I hit him first and hearing him open
openly talk about how, like, he has a separate office, but he chose to put me in that one, in the mob closet, and then Camrad, I don't, I don't know how he's smart enough to even tie his shoes, let alone, like, have a job. He, he looks like such a bumbling jackass. It was stunning. Like, they did that pre-trial uh, conference thing, the evidentiary hearing, and Camrad testified at that and got caught in, like, 13 different lies. And I thought, surely, at trial, this buffoon will will at least tighten up. At least try to not sound like such a, uh, such a, just a slug. And it was hard to even be mad at them because they just sound so ridiculous. Like they sound like children up there trying to learn their alphabet. And so it was, it was both triggering and highly amusing because... They were both such jackasses.